You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. And welcome back. The mayor of Utah's biggest city is laying out her vision for the future. Mayor Erin Mendenhall gave her State of the City address last night and joined ABC4 today to answer our questions about it all. Yeah, she spoke with ABC4's Brian Carlson today for Good Morning Utah, covering everything from saving water to plans for new development. Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall delivered her State of the City address last night. During her speech, the mayor said the city is ready for the future. Among the number of issues she's concerned about is the rising cost of housing. She says she's working to improve affordable housing and the city's homeless problem. The mayor also announced a new $100 million partnership with the Larry H. and Gail Miller Foundation to revitalize the city's ballpark neighborhood. This innovative and collaborative public-private partnership will generate investment dollars that will give life to programs and opportunities that build human capital, improve social determinants of health and economic mobility, and truly give life to an entire community and city beyond. Now, when it comes to saving the Great Salt Lake, people living in Salt Lake City, they say, save close to 3 billion gallons of water last year, but the mayor says more needs to be done and announced three water conservation proposals, including a temporary drought surcharge for people who use the most water. So joining us live in studio to share more about those proposals and her State of the City address is Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. So let's start with those proposals. You mentioned that we're having a surcharge for people who use the most water. How much is that surcharge going to be and how much in, how many gallons of water do you think that'll save? Salt Lake City already has a four tiered rate structure where at the base level, if you're not watering your lawn, you're living in an apartment, you're paying the least amount of for your water. But we're looking at tiers three and four. Our public utilities analyzing what that rate structure will look like right now. We should have a proposal to our city council by late spring, early summer, and it would kick in for those highest water users really to hopefully encourage less. So I noticed you mentioned a lot of things last night. There was a lot of a number of announcements there. One of those was you mentioned the poop plant and re reclaimed water going into the Great Salt Lake. I know our public utilities director was like, why? why yeah, I'm sure that they had a fun <laughs> with that one. It's called the Water Reclamation Facility. The official name. That is. is official Where name. did the idea come from? It actually is incumbent upon us. We have to do it. Our water reclamation facility that's still working today is far past as its expected lifespan. It's almost 60 years old. And since that time, the requirements from the federal government of what can be in the water and what can't be in the water have become much more stringent, which is appropriate because of the health awareness that they have. Our current facility, the old one, it simply is impossible to retrofit it to get to those new standards. Besides that, we're pretty lucky it's lasted this long. So we've had a new one under construction for a couple of years. It's going to take a couple of years more. It's right on track, on budget. It's the biggest public utility project we've ever done. And one day when it's done in about two years, we're going to flip a switch and the water will simply flow into the new one. It'll also allow us to clean up and put more water into the Great Salt Lake. Very, very clean water. 13 billion gallons a year. Well, I'm sure you got a lot more public sentiment, especially for moves like this when you have the water levels so low. We need to do so much we can to be able to fill the, uh, fill the lake. So that's not the only thing you mentioned last night. So in addition to that, you've also got the homeless camp situation. I know that's something you want to address. How do you respond to those advocates who say, like, it wasn't done the right way? I know that the cleanup that tried to happen last week in that same location was actually disrupted, interrupted, and cut short because of activists who were interrupting mm -hmm. the Salt Lake County Health Department and Salt Lake City workers who were trying to do that abatement. This was sort of a second phase of what was supposed to all happen last week. And the communication channels are often indirect between the cleanup workers and the encampment people, sometimes being interrupted by those people who I, I think are trying to help but end up sometimes diverting that work. Salt Lake County is our partner. The county actually leads the health cleanups. They have the directive to do so, and the city helps if those cleanups are in our city. The, p the big point here, though, is that Salt Lake City isn't just pointing fingers and working in isolation on homelessness, as we have for too long in the past. They, not only the county, but the state of Utah, with the guidance of Wayne Niederhauser and the governor's office, has taken a major and new role in partnering and in bringing coordination and, frankly, responsibility that the state should have for what is really a statewide homelessness crisis that gets concentrated in just a few cities in our state. I know there's a lot of issues that you have to tackle here. And before we let you go, I have to bring up the $100 million now going in with the Gale and Larry H. Miller Foundation. 
Where's that money going to go for the ballpark neighborhood? My request to them in making this kind of human-centered development is not that we just plow it into whatever buildings are going to happen. Frankly, Salt Lake City could release a request for proposals on our north parking lot there and eventually the ballpark itself, and we would have dozens of, re of replies from developers ready to build there. What I want this investment to do is go above and beyond what the natural market is going to build there and bring in the kind of assets and benefits that grow community, that help families thrive, that help connect people with opportunities. We've got a relatively low graduation rate in that census tract in the ballpark neighborhood. We need workforce development opportunities. We need affordable, high quality early childhood education. These are the kind of programs that we want to see in those buildings and be a part of the heart of the ballpark when baseball stops. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of needs in 2023. Yes, yeah. there are, but we are ready, and that was the theme of last night. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake City is cranking right now. Our team is amazing, but really the people of Salt Lake City are so creative and tenacious, caring about one another, so we're ready for whatever comes next. And we're glad to have you with us here this morning. Salt Lake City Thank Mayor Aaron Menhall, thanks for joining us. Thank you.